Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It is late at night, I'm bored, and I guess that means it's time for another unit tutorial. This one is going to be on the t on all the tiers of Navy in Forged Alliance. And it is a long and convoluted discussion. So as you can see, I am actually in windowed mode this time because I have my handy dandy unit database over here on the other screen where you cannot see it. And I'm going to be talking at great length about these. So this one is going to be a little longer. We have a lot of units to go over, but I'll do it as concisely as I possibly can. And as I've warned you on my other unit tutorials, if you're looking for strategies in how to use these units specifically, wait for upcoming sessions. Uh, this is strictly going over the costs benefits and comparisons of not only units within the same faction but across factions and your overall goals with this so it is definitely some good material maybe a little dry and numbers heavy but if you can stick with me through it i guarantee you you will learn at least one thing that you didn't know before and you will find something to help you out maybe a unit ability that you did not know existed or something of that sort so without further ado let's go ahead and jump in and quit wasting time we're going to start with the tech one as we always do and uh, tech one is going to be the meat and potatoes of your navy your frigate is the backbone throughout the entire game it is your meat shield it has high hp and decent damage even though it's on a low range for the mass cost so you're going to want to be building these the entire game uh, if you stop building frigates you are destined for doom that is all i've got to say these vary just a little bit on cost and their uh, and their attributes but we'll run through them real quick uh, let's start with the Aeon. Aeon is the oddball out, is the only one that does not have anti-air, and it is also the most expensive at 290 mass. It has 1800 health, which is the lowest, and it does have a respectable uh, 56 damage per second, which is not fantastic, but it's not the worst of the frigates. I honestly hate the Aeon Frigate. It has a little bit more range. It has three range than the other frigates, which all have 28. This one has 31. And I think the idea was for it to be somewhat of a kiting unit, but that did not come to pass. And between the highest cost and the lowest health and not the best damage numbers and no anti-air, I can honestly say that I would rather build a hover tank than I would build an Aeon Frigate. But... People still use them, and they're not the worst unit in the game, so to each his own on that one. It has two guns, one front, one rear, so it does have to broadside like a battleship to bring its total damage to bear. And all of these units have the same speed. They all have a six speed. Let's move on to Cybrin. Cybrin is the strongest frigate. It is the cheapest at 250 mass. It has the second lowest health at 1900, but it has the highest damage, 65 damage per second, the best anti-air at 16 damage per second, and it is relatively accurate. And all around, this is a monster. Cybern is the best rushing faction, even on the water. The anti-air is good enough on these boats that a couple of frigates together can actually defend themselves from Tech 1 bombers reasonably well. And a handful of them, 5, 6, 7, can defend themselves against a couple of gunships. So these are very handy frigates to have, and you will definitely want them in your navy for all times. The Seraphim frigate. Costs 270 mass, has 2,000 health, and does 55 damage per second with 13 damage per second to air. So slightly inferior to the Cybern Frigate, but not by much. And then the UEF Frigate sticks with the faction values of having the highest health numbers. It has 2120 health for 280 mass cost. It is the second most expensive frigate. And it does 50 damage per second with 10 damage to air. So slightly worse damage statistics than the Seraphim, but higher health, 10 more mass cost. The only thing that is different about the UEF frigate, and I actually can't show you because Fog of War is not on. And I am too lazy to go turn it off through the uh, cheat menu. Um, the Thunderhead has jamming. 
which means that there's a bunch of fake radar blips floating around, which some of you may think is really stupid because uh, you, uh, unless you're against an opponent that is trying to kite you, honestly jamming doesn't do a whole lot of good. What it does do though is any units that are trying to kite around the outside edge of your navy and fire in on you, if the enemy does not have good intel on your navy, they will waste tons of damage on false radar blips. It will fire torpedoes at blips where there is no unit. It will fire direct fire shots. It just wastes all of your opponent's stuff. So the jamming can actually be pretty good when you have a couple of these frigates in. And of course, like the other ones, you want to be building frigates the entire game because they are the backbone of your navy. Aeon, if you'll remember, I did mention that this has no anti-air. It does have an anti-torpedo projectile. It is the only frigate that does, and it fires once every 10 seconds, which honestly is pretty pitiful. That means that the Aeon has a dedicated anti-air boat called the Shard. It is the only faction that has one of these at T1, and this little boat is awesome. I don't know that I can justify having a separate unit for it, but just by itself, it's pretty dang cool. Of course, it has no direct fire damage but it has a 35 dps anti-air cannon this is the fastest naval unit with a whopping eight speed it can actually trail bombers for a very good distance chase down air units as it's shooting them and it has 750 hp for a mass cost of 120 so this is basically a mobile stationary tech one anti-air that is on the water really cool unit extremely good at air denial especially early in the game a lot better than people give it credit for but again i'm i can't justify this pair because the total mass cost is far more for what you get than building a cybern frigate or any of the other frigates for that matter on to the subs Seraphim got the raw end of the deal on this one. Their sub is by far the worst. Let me get my unit database statistics up here. They have the lowest health and that is 400 HP. All of the subs cost the same at 360. They have all the same damage at 37.5 and they have varying forms of a deck gun except for Aeon because Aeon always has to be different the Aeon sub really does not have any redeeming qualities or anything special about it it has 550 health same damage as all the rest no deck gun whoop de doo da the Cybern Seraphim and UEF all have a deck gun UEF is 25 DPS the Cybern is 20 and Seraphim is 22 and then the Seraphim only has 400 health, UEF has 600, as always they've got to have the most, and Siren has 525. I have no idea why it was decided that the Seraphim attack sub only has 400 health, in my opinion that is kind of ridiculous and it contributes to Seraphim being very weak at Navy overall at the moment in this balance. Um, but it is what it is. The Seraphim is the only sub at T1 that has torpedo defense. It does have a one projectile every 20 seconds, which is essentially non-existent. I think the torpedo defense is probably why they lowered the health value, but it was not a worthy trade. So there it is, folks. The deck gun is a very handy tool because if you're going to go early Navy raiding and you have a factory with some engineers around it and you want to kill all that stuff, if you're submerged, you can only kill the factory and you know anything actually in the water. If it is Seraphim or Aeon, they have hover engineers, which you cannot damage with torpedoes, but you can surface and use your handy dandy deck guns right there. You can see them plinking away. You can use those to get rid of any pesky engineers. So that is a very handy tool to have at your disposal. All right, done with Tech 1, but do not forget about it because as I've already said a couple of times, the Tech 1 is the backbone of your Navy and I know that's repetitive, but you gotta remember that because when you stop building frigates, you're gonna die. And let's talk about Hover. I went over the statistics of Hover in the T2 LAN tutorial so I'm not going to go over the statistics here, but just to point out, these do supplement your Navy and they do a very nice job of it. Aeon has Tech 1 hover tanks, which are extremely good for denying a very early rush or the Seraphim hover arty. 
and then they also have the T2 hover tank, the Blaze Assault Tank, and then Hover Flak as well, all of which greatly complement your Navy, as well as the Hover Shield. The dome does project under the water as well as above, and that means that it can soak up torpedo damage very efficiently. It is cheap health, so you need to keep these with your Navy as much as possible, and it will help you out to great lengths. The last unit that they have is the Absolver, which a lot of people completely forget about as a tool for being on the water, and this is a basically direct counter to UEF Navy. UEF has the Bulwark Floating Shield, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Well, the Absolver has longer range than the UEF Destroyer does, and it does massive amounts of damage to mobile shields. So you can use this baby right here to mix in with your Navy and take out the shielding of opposing navies and let your own destroyers and tanks get in there and kill everything. So don't forget about these. They're not a game-breaking unit. They're not going to save your life if you were gonna die anyway, but I would definitely consider uh, keeping these in my mix for use at some point. You may just find that you love them. UEF does have a hover tank, the Riptide, which is the highest DPS hover tank and it does reasonably well at naval denial and then we have the Yenzine which is the Seraphim hover tank they have the Tech 1 hover arty and a mobile flak at their disposal the Tech 1 hover arty is very strong very nice tool excellent to drop in and or run in to kill off any build power that your opponent has on navy and then of course the mobile shield which again projects underwater use it to soak up torp damage or surface damage this hover shield does have a big enough dome to actually stop battleship fire so that is the t2 in a nutshell of course the cybern has the wagner which is basically useless for any kind of water attacks because it has no dps on its torpedoes but it is an amphibious tank, so we will give it an honorable mention here. That is Hover. We are done with it. Get it out of my sight. On to the Destroyers. The Destroyers probably have the most variants out of any of the units in Navy. There is great variety in Tech 2 Navy as there is great variety in Tech 2 Land. This is where most of your strategies are going to come to fruition before you get to the T3 Battleship Slugfest. Let's go ahead and take a look at the statistics on here. Um, ooh, I did not refresh my unit statistics page. Give me just a second, guys. I do apologize for doing it this way, but there was no other way that I could get to it. I did attempt it, but it did not work out. Let's talk about Siren first. The Salem class, everybody loves this destroyer. It's the one that can walk on land. It is pitifully slow, but it is essentially a walking mobile arty at the T2 phase. It has 80 range, as does the Exodus class. These two have the longer ranged cannons. Um, and this one does have reasonably good anti-air as well. Same as the Siren frigate. This fits into the Rush faction classification. Um, 57 DPS to air, which is very respectable. A couple of destroyers can defend themselves against a tort bomber or two, or a couple of gunships, or a fair amount of Tech 1 bombers. So this is a very handy feature. They have a 100 DPS nanite torpedo system, and then an anti-torpedo, which fires twice every four seconds. So it's actually a reasonably good anti-torpedo. And then the main deck gun, as aforementioned, 80 range, one area of effect, and 230 damage. Very nice statistics on that one. It is the highest, um, I, I'm sorry, second highest damage. And it does deliver all of its damage from this front cannon. So that gives it a slight disadvantage because you cannot run away from about right here to right here. It cannot fire behind the unit because the main stack here gets in the way. So you need to kite back and forth in diagonals when you're running away from enemies as Cybern um, to avoid that problem where if you're running directly away from an opponent, they can hit you, you can't hit them. All right, moving on to the Exodus, and we're going to lump these two together in just a second to explain a couple things. 
one thing I forgot to mention, all of the destroyers do cost 2250 mass and they have a different amount of health for each one. We've got 60, 50, 6050 for the Salem and then a incredibly beefy 7500 for the Aeon destroyer. It has 212 damage on the large range, the 80 range. But this one is on a very slow firing cycle. It fires once every five seconds for a little over a thousand damage. It has awesome torpedo weapons, 106 plus 75. Basically 180 DPS, but half of that is in a depth charge, which is not affected by anti-torpedo systems, so it consistently deals about 100 damage to underwater naval targets, and which makes it excellent against subs, and then it has another 75 on top of that in its torpedo system. Then it has the same anti-torpedo system basically as the Salem, two projectiles every four seconds. These two guys are very strong, and the reason that they have the 80 range is because these guys do not have siege weapons for cruisers. Uh, this is a distinction that I didn't realize, and a lot of people don't realize. Uh, it's obvious once you know it, but uh, sometimes it takes some explaining. These two have 80 range and no tack missiles on their cruisers. These two have 60 range, so they can't really reach much, but they have a little bit more brute force behind them, and then their cruisers are siege weapons for shore bombardment. So that's something to keep in mind, a little cool piece of trivia. Um, moving on from these guys, we've got the UEF Valiant class, which has the highest surface damage. It is a whopping 280 DPS off of two cannons, one forward facing and one rear facing, which means it can defend itself equally well front and back or broadside for maximum damage potential. It has a 14 DPS anti-air cannon, by the way, the Exodus class also does not have anti-air, in case you were wondering. And the... Torpedo system is basically non-existent, as is the anti-torpedo. This thing has a pitiful, paltry 30 damage per second. A handful of Tech 1 subs can kill this thing. It is very weak to subs, but it technically has the strongest deck cannon. But the short range kind of kills it. Seraphim is a dual-purpose destroyer. By the way, 7200 health on this one. It has 6900 health. It does have the 60 range weapon separated into two beams, one in the rear and one in the front, and no anti-air on this one. They total out to about 170 DPS, and then it packs in 160 damage per second for torpedoes, slightly behind the Exodus class. And then it does have a anti-torpedo defense which fires one projectile every 3.8 seconds not the greatest not the worst and this one does submerge it does not seraphim does not have a dedicated t2 torpedo uh, vessel so this one serves a dual purpose one good thing about this is that since it does have the 60 range you can submerge close distance with another unit until you get inside their range so the fight is a little more even and then emerge and then since it does use beam weapons which have good rotation speeds you can basically micro all you want with this unit without fear of slowing down your firing cycle or running into issues so the micro is strong with the seraphim destroyer micro is everything the seraphim destroyer is technically the weakest by the damage and health numbers and it gets slaughtered if you don't micro but if you do micro it is reasonably strong although not as strong as i think it needs to be for the overall naval balance something about the seraphim navy needs to be changed you'll kind of see as a running theme that they're drastically lagging behind um they were Oh, they were honestly overpowered for quite some time, and then they went through a series of nerfs on all tiers that was just horrendous, and now it is not good for the faction. Uh, people who have overpowered Micro can still make awesome things happen with Seraphim, but overall they are not nearly as good as they used to be. Um, the one last thing that I will say about these is that the Exodus and Salem, you do need to be careful 
As aforementioned, the Salem does have the problem with not being able to fire directly behind it. The Exodus has the same problem. The cannon cannot fire behind the boat not directly behind anyway the other problem that these two share is with a combination of slow projectile speed and long range that they're firing over these two units are pretty easy to dodge and see how long it takes those shots to fire you can effectively zigzag and turn circles and do whatever you want to do with a couple of boats and it will confuse the ever-living hell out of these two destroyers so you want to micro to beat these two if you micro you can beat them easily um, to counter the micro you need more salems and you need to come to point-blank range and bludgeon them to death with the exodus the Exodus has the extra health to survive it, the extra torpedo damage that you want to lay down on the enemy units inside this circle, and a brutal deck gun. You just need five or six of them, not one or two of them, and you need to close to close quarter range to use that gun effectively. Now, obviously you don't wanna go in over your head versus a Seraphim Destroyer and get right up close when he already has more than you, but I think you get what I mean by that. So that is the Destroyers. Let's get rid of those guys and talk about Cruisers. The Cybern Cruiser fits again into the whole mantra of being a rush faction. Cybern has the strongest T1 and arguably has one of, if not the strongest Tech 2, strictly for rushing the cruiser does not have a bombardment weapon instead it actually has a deck gun like the destroyer has what yes it could defend itself against hover reasonably well against tech one navy in most cases it does a halfway decent job and it does have the same 80 range as the destroyer does and i'm over here getting all of my stuff together on the cruisers while I'm talking um, a 184 damage per second on the forward proton cannon and this is what I'm talking about right here it basically has the same firing style and cycle as the destroyer and it is also easy to dodge and then the other thing that this has is a toggle for the anti-air weapon which redirects another 180 damage per second into this nano dart launcher you see here that is a non-tracking projectile cannot hit the broad side of a barn but what it is great at is breaking shields it throws down a lot of extra damage that is guaranteed to hit a large target like a bulwark shield or even some shielding on <clears throat> shielding on the shore and it will help you break bases this is the siege weapon for the Cybrans. Switch it back to anti-air, and you're gonna get 530 DPS in anti-air damage, but it has a very slow projectile speed and somewhat of an odd launching cycle. It fires six projectiles on every 1.3 second cycle. They have a lifetime of 5.5, and they travel relatively slowly. Technically, the range is 75. The problem that the Cybern Cruiser has is that it deals overkill because it will have many projectiles in the air aimed at the same unit, and since they get there more slowly, it will waste a quarter or so of its damage on units running away from it. Also, sometimes it will not hit T3 scouts at all because if the scout is flying directly over at max speed, by the time the projectile catches up to the T3 scout, it is already dead. So there are some issues with this. Does not do quite as well versus strap bombers, T3 torp bombers, and T3 air elimination, but it does do very well versus gunships and Tech 2 torp bombers, which is what you want when you're a rush faction. So this fits right into that mantra. Uh, you want to rush as hard as possible, as often as possible with Cybern. 3,000 health, 2,000 mass cost, and it is also unique in that it has air staging. It can refuel air units on this little pad back here and repair them. So that can be a very handy tool in a forward position. All right, enough about the Cybern Cruiser. Let's talk about the UEF Cruiser. This is a very good all-rounder. Awesome anti-air, a 500 DPS SAM launcher with a decent firing cycle fires uh four it has a two second firing cycle launching four projectiles is what it boils down to and all of those total out to 
1,000 damage if all four strike the same target. Put these under some mobile shields, and these things are nigh on indestructible. The UEF faction is the only one that can survive against a Solus bombardment mass effectively. A single Solus will kill any cruiser in one pass because it does 4,000 damage, and as you can see, all of these are under 4,000 health. The UEF cruiser, though, if you stick it underneath a bulwark that gives you all the extra health to eat through, it can survive two firing cycles of the Solus and kill two or three off of the third firing cycle, or eliminate two or three torps off of the third firing cycle, allowing this to land four passes worth of damage in one lifespan. So that comes way out in the UEF's favor as far as putting cruisers against the opposing shore and bombarding the shore while air is trying to get their player back in the water. So that is something very strong. This has a deck gun worth 50 DPS that fires once every four seconds and that is the red range ring out there. Not anything special on that deck gun. It can plink off an NG or two, but not much else. And then it has a tack launcher. Tack launcher fires to this yellow range ring. Very nice long range weapon. Does 100 DPS and it has an interesting firing cycle. It fires four projectiles in 1.4 seconds and then it has a 5.8 second reload for 10 seconds total, dealing, dealing 1200 damage. Now you say, why is that important? Well, these two cruisers, UEF and Seraphim, both have TAC launchers. Seraphim is a sustained bombardment that uh, launches the same amount of TAC missiles uh, consistently. It fires once. I I'm looking for the statistic here exactly. Yes, it fires once every two seconds with a 500 damage missile and it fires every two seconds for all eternity so a constant stream of missiles and each missile has one health so tmd is very effective at stopping seraphim cruisers but the seraphim cruisers do twice as much dps with their tack launcher the difference with uef this one does 250 this one does 120. it fires four missiles stacked right on top of each other which is better for overwhelming tack defense and each missile has two health, which means that it takes two tack defense to drop each missile that this cruiser fires. So you can have four tack defense completely deny three Seraphim cruisers, and under a shield they can hold off four Seraphim cruisers for a while. It's basically one TMD to a cruiser and throw in a shield every once in a while. UEF? Haha! <laughs> Four TMD will not even come close. Two UEF cruisers can easily overwhelm four TMD. They just don't do as much damage once they break the TMD. So it's kind of two sides of the same coin. Do you want your higher DPS or do you want your ability to break uh, TMD? It's, it's take your pick here. Back to the UEF cruiser to finish this discussion. 2500 health as before mentioned not enough to survive a solus pass and i think that's all i have to say about that one uh seraphim cruiser we already talked about the tack missile not going to touch on that anymore we've got 2400 health on this one same cost for all the cruisers 2000 mass it has a no deck cannon it is completely helpless out in the water but it has awesome anti-air the highest total anti-air damage 480 in a flak cannon with a four area damage uh this is the only cruiser with flak it is amazing versus t2 torp bombers and uh gunships 480 damage in a flak cannon but it is a slow moving projectile does pitifully versus t3 air so you definitely need to keep that in mind if you're stacking up a bunch of cruisers in your navy it does have a three a 330 DPS direct fire gun for additional anti-air, but the aiming is not so great on it and it still misses sometimes. T3 scouts can easily penetrate Seraphim cruiser coverage and uh, it you win some, you lose some. This is the best cruiser versus gunships and T2 air. The Probably the worst gunship 
or the worst cruiser versus T3 air, um, in my opinion. I'm sure there's people that are going to disagree with that. Some of that depends on the circumstances of the game and the units being used, but that's what I think of it. So that is the Seraphim Cruiser. The last one that we're going to look at is the Aeon Cruiser. This one has a deck gun that does 70 DPS, fires two projectiles every four seconds at 140 damage each, and it basically can plink off engineers. It kind of has a version of the frigate gun. Um, the It has 3,250 health, which is the highest health of any of the cruisers, and it does an awesome job in anti-air. The Aeon Navy seems to have very dedicated naval slots. This thing does has two guns that do 375 damage a piece for a total of 750, and it fires once every second two projectiles with a very fast travel speed, which means that the Aeon Cruiser has basically no overkill. Additionally, the Aeon Cruiser is the only one that can reach out and touch air units. All of the other cruisers will kill a torp bomber as it passes over their heads. The Aeon Cruiser is the only one that if you have a T2 torpedo bomber out here and you're running away, the projectile is so fast that it will actually shoot down the T2 torp bomber before it can drop its bomb on the cruiser. The cruiser will take zero damage. So that is a very handy ability. This thing is brutal versus any form of anti-air it or any form of air unit. It is amazing. If you want to control the skies, you want the Aeon Cruiser. All right, that is all of the cruisers. We are done with those. Let's move on to the dedicated torpedo weapons. Of course, the Cybern has the stealth sub. This is an incredibly useful sub all the way through to Tech 3. It is a fairly cheap unit to rush, and it does good damage. Um, it does have the stealth on it. This is probably the most awesome thing about this sub, and it means that it is pretty much concealed unless you either have Omni or Vision on it, and its attack range is longer than a destroyer's vision range, which means that this sub can attack a destroyer without being hit. The solution to this problem is cruisers, because cruisers vision range is longer than the subs attack range. So if you have a cruiser here and there in your navy, you'll be able to spot the subs coming. You're welcome, that may save you a headache or three. The It costs 1100 mass, has 1430 health, and it does 112 DPS on its torpedoes. Interesting thing about the Barracuda. You can go Cybern versus Seraphim Navy and build 100% stealth subs and win basically every game as long as you have air control. Because mass for mass, the T2 sub hunter beats the Seraphim destroyer, it beats Tech 1 Navy because of range, and it stands a very good chance against the T3 sub hunters because of its stealth. It can overcome the range problem quite easily. So this is a brutal little unit that you need to abuse as much as possible, especially once the game starts going into the later phases, because it's pretty much the most awesome thing that the Cybern has once the destroyer becomes outdated somewhat. Um, the Vesper is the Aeon equivalent, also costs 1100 mass, but it has 1800 health, no stealth, and 90 DPS. And both of these have a relatively negligible anti-torpedo unit. Um, the Vesper, honestly, I don't see a point in building, because the Exodus, the Aeon Destroyer, actually does more torpedo damage than the Vesper does, and also has a deck gun and more health. So... This little guy is quite neglected. I guess you could build him versus UEF if UEF isn't building any Coopers, but that is your own decision. UEF is the oddball. They have the Cooper, which is a surface unit that does the job of a dedicated torpedo unit. It has a whopping 97 DPS. It is the cheapest at 900 mass, 200 less than the subs, and it will always beat a sub mostly because it basically fires an anti-torpedo projectile once per second. If you put about five of these under a shield, 
the anti-torpedo and the shield will basically completely negate a large amount of subs because all of the torpedoes will either be shot down or hit the shield and then the cooper will use its brilliant damage to take out all of the subs coopers versus subs the coopers always win shields or no but the shields greatly help the situation um additionally you need to stack a lot of these in the late game uef navy especially paired with the atlantis because the anti-torpedo on these boats makes them indispensable even if they're not dealing a ton of damage of their own just the protection that they provide your navy is amazing they only have 1750 health and this is actually a weak point and a strong point for the uef navy because seraphim can shred coopers pretty effectively the problem with coopers is that they're surface units that serve an anti-torpedo job so if your opponent builds subs you can pwn them but if they have surface units and you mix too many coopers into your navy you will get owned because they can reach out and kill all of your coopers relatively easily and then you have nothing left um the additionally the seraphim destroyer can emerge from the water zap all of the coopers off with its direct fire weapons and then once the uef navy has no more torpedo damage in the form of coopers it can submerge its destroyers and kill off the rest of your destroyers and other navy with the torpedo weapons on the seraphim destroyer so that's a pretty brutal combo move if you can get that pulled off effectively so you need to watch for bulwarks if there are are not bulwarks coopers if there are not coopers nearby in a uef navy go in with your subs and you will kill everything if there are coopers go in with your direct fire weapons and you can kill all the coopers and then there are no more coopers the bulwark is the only thing protecting that let's talk about these special t2 units these are pretty much exclusive to cybern and uef uh, the bulwark is pretty self-explanatory it is a big shield boat it has a massive bubble size although the bubble size is slightly deceptive uh, you can see the graphic for the bubble and you can see that red circle the red circle is actually the range of the shield any unit inside the red circle will be protected i don't know why the graphic for the shield extends past that if it is a uh, optical illusion or what that is I don't know actually it looks like the dome projects under the water and the lip of the dome is the red ring that's probably what that is I just had an epiphany answered my own question because I got down and panned around on the camera so you want units inside the red ring that you are going to protect they have very low health they're pretty fragile once the shield goes down but they are very handy you need to have them in your navy because the uef has the short range um the short range destroyers and the shields are going to be what gives you the health needed to survive the push to get into range they have 8,000 health apiece. they cost 1300 mass and they consume 150 power while they're running very handy unit the other special unit is the mermaid now this is a drastically underutilized unit i love this little boat because it provides stealth cybran is all about stealth it lets you use the long 80 range of their destroyers to strike at other navies without ever coming within vision radius you can do tons of damage before the enemy has realized what's happened and additionally even if you do not have the opportunity to stealth if your enemy is scouting you constantly you still need to build mermaids because this is probably the best anti-torpedo unit in the game i know the cooper is awesome and overall the cooper is better because it also deals torpedo damage but these guys fire two anti-torpedo flares every four seconds and you say what's the difference between a flare and a torpe anti-torpedo projectile the projectile takes out a single torpedo the flare lights up for a brief period of time and consumes all incoming torpedoes from that direction i have seen an anti-torpedo flare from a mermaid hook 15 or so torpedoes at a time and they just go into a little death spiral around the flare until their fuel is consumed and they go away a mermaid is extremely good at denying torpedo damage 
horrendously amazing at it. Um, that's actually kind of a contradictory statement, but I'm going to pass over that. So that is the T2 special units there. All right, let's talk about T3. These are the aircraft carriers, and we're going to talk about these first because they are a cruiser substitute. Now, you may think I'm insane for saying that, but let me explain myself to those of you who do not know what's going on here. Um, you may have seen some of the slightly higher rated people begin spamming aircraft carriers late in the game, and you probably wondered why. Well, these are effectively cruisers but they're hardy cruisers. They cost almost exactly twice as much as a cruiser does. All the cruisers cost 2,000 mass. The aircraft carriers cost uh, 3,600 for the Cybern, so actually less than twice as much. Uh, 4,400 for the Seraphim, which is a little over twice as much, and exactly twice as much for the Aeon at 4,000 mass. Now, they do cost substantially more power, but I do believe it's worth it. The carriers as a general rule have less damage on their anti-air weapons um, we've got four times 160 on the cybran carrier which works out to 540 my math is terrible 640 yes 640 and then the seraphim carrier does 240 times 2, which is 480, and then the Aeon does 600 DPS total. All slightly less than their cruiser counterparts. The difference is that for twice the mass investment, you get 10 times the health. These will survive multiple passes of a Solus, and they will shoot down many, many, many torpedo bombers and gunships and whatever else the enemy can throw at you before they die. We've got 24,000 health on the Seraphim carrier, 22,000 on the Aeon carrier, and 20,000 on the Siren carrier. These are very sturdy, very survivable boats, and they have awesome anti-air on them. As soon as you are able, you need to swap these out for your other cruisers if you're concerned about long-term anti-air protection. Your cruisers are still good to have around, and they have more brute force DPS than the aircraft carriers do, but these are going to be your tanks when you're having a lot of air problems. The other thing that I need to mention is the reason that the Seraphim carrier costs that extra 400 mass for the 440 total is because it has the same tack launcher on it that the Seraphim cruiser has. Same range, same jet, same attributes, everything is the exact same launcher and that comes in incredibly handy. You can see right there it is, that tack launcher. So you can literally substitute the Seraphim um, aircraft carrier for the cruiser and not lose anything. Additionally, all of these can build air units probably guess that because of the name aircraft carrier you can see down there you've got the nice selection of units that you can build and spit out to consume the enemy if they dare to get too close also refueling and repair in those moving on to the battleships we've got four one for each faction and they vary widely a lot more widely than you would think they did um, destroyers seem to be pretty straightforward but they Oh, let's just talk about it. Um, trying to get my unit selected here. And there we go. Information is up. Cybran Battleship. 47,000 health. Costs 8,000 mass. It is the cheapest destroyer. And it has a unique characteristic. It has an oddball firing cycle. It is the best versus hover. And smaller, low-tier units. It has, you can see it fires one single projectile. And has a fairly consistent fire rate that does small amounts of damage rapidly this means it does not overkill as much you can see the firing cycle is actually pretty cool the animation on here it fires from one cannon at a time cycling through the three has a rear mount and a forward mount cannon which split the damage equally total dps is 225 times two which is 550 
And I'm sure that if I'm making math mistakes here, everybody is going to correct me in the comments. And please do so people have correct information. Um, 60 DPS for an anti-air weapon, a basically non-existent uh, torpedo weapon at 20 DPS. And that is about it for the Cyber Destroyer. Like I said, it is the best at killing off low tier units. Again, Cyber and Rush. Not very sturdy in the late game, but uh, very strong in the early mid game. The UEF is exactly opposite that. This is the king of bombardments. The other battleships, Seraphim and Cybern have 128 range. The UEF battleship has a full 150, the same as a cruiser. This thing has massive range does 150 damage times three again 550 damage uh, has two forward guns and one rear gun now you do not want to get hit by a summit class barrage a single barrage does 3000 damage um per turret i think this is 9000 total yes so 9,000 per firing cycle, but it only fires once every 20 seconds, which means if a target has more than 9,000 health left, it does massive amounts of overkill, but its range is its redeeming factor. Once the UEF Navy starts rolling and you get a bunch of shield boats around a group of summits to protect it, you can pretty much bombard anything into oblivion. It does have four times 14 damage on its anti-air. None of the battleships really have significant anti-air and no torpedo weapon. It has 51,000 health and costs 9,000 mass. Uh, the other three here cost 9,000 mass. This, uh, the Cybern is the only one that costs 8,000. So that is the Summit. The Omen is a very misunderstood battleship. I think of the Omen class like I think of the UEF Battlecruiser, which we'll talk about in just a minute. It has the shortest range at 100, but it has the highest damage at 170 times 3. And I am scared to do the math on that. 300 plus 240 would be 540. 510. That does not make sense. Yes, it does. 510. Um, the other battleships had 450. That's what I had wrong. 450 damage for the other three battleships, and this one has 510. I knew it had more damage. All right. It has the shortest range, though, so I think of it like a melee weapon. It does have a fairly good firing cycle. It fires once every 5.9 seconds on each of three guns. And these are basically oblivion cannons. They are single shot and there's no real huge area of effect. They have a two damage radius, but these guys are brutal at dealing damage up close in a broadside. Two cannons forward, one cannon back, like most of the battleships. So you want to get in close and get nasty with this battleship. It has a fair amount of health, 48,000 health, 9,000 mass cost, as discussed before. And that is it for the Aeon Battleship. Again, do not try to use this for an extreme range weapon. Don't try to engage at range with other factions because you'll get mutilated. You need to get in down and dirty with this battleship. Don't stand off. Use it like a battlecruiser. Seraphim Battleship. This one deserves a good long mention because it is a nuke launcher. This is the Seraphim Nuke at T3 Navy. Seraphim has very few naval units as I'm sure you noticed. They have no dedicated torpedo weapon at T2 and no special unit at T2 so they have very few. Uh, just a handful actually. Um, this one does the same 450 damage per second off of three cannons which are kind of oddly mounted here. Let me see if I can show you. Now they are standing up on top two forward, one back, and one slightly higher than the rest, which is, I mean, Seraphim is asymmetrical. What else can I say? Um, the 
it does have anti-air for two times 14 damage 9,000 mass cost 49,000 health so pretty much a lot of redundant numbers there but the nuke is a little bit different uh, start building it the nuke costs uh, 12,000 to build I think if I'm not totally mistaken um, it does go out to the yellow circle out here that is the range of the nuke and the nuke itself does 30,000 damage which is the best of the naval nukes so that is the battleship right there we're finished let's cancel it special units at t3 the battle cruiser for uef this is the master of the uef navy uh, you can say that about the summit and the battle cruiser they're both awesome at what they do incredibly handy units um this one does 282 times 2 540 damage per second but only on 80 range which you'll notice is the same as the destroyer ranges for aeon and cybern your best hope against aeon and cybern navy as uef is to survive to get your first battle cruiser out spam frigates and shields until you get that t3 naval upgrade going and then spam battle cruisers you will win they have 25,000 health which is fairly low but not so much that they're paper they cost 7,000 mass a piece throw in some bulwarks for the extra shield health and you are golden these things can rapidly knock out destroyers with focus fires they use directed beam weapons they do not use the arching cannon fire there you go you can see it and this also makes them relatively good at knocking down hover units and zapping off frigates the frigates i believe they kill a frigate per firing cycle or two frigates per firing cycle i forget and then two cruisers can one shot hit destroyers in rapid succession so these are these are critical to the uef navy in the early t3 stage to fight off the remaining destroyer masses that the opponent has definitely do not neglect to build these uh, they have a 20 dps torpedo negligible and basically non-existent torpedo defense the seraphim t3 sub is a specialized unit for seraphim it used to be the strongest of all of the naval units i think in my opinion maybe the summit could be argued to be stronger but in a totally different aspect this is for naval control the summit was for bombardment this has 335 dps which has been the same for a very long time but it got its range nerfed recently it's down to 65 range it only has five move speed which is 1.5 slower than the other t2 subs and then it has 4,000 health which is the change that i disagree with the most this means that solaces the aeon t3 torque bomber kill these in one pass it used to take more than one pass so you can take a handful of solaces and decimate a seraphim t3 navy it is very very sickening to watch um one thing about the seraphim sub though is that it can defend itself from air relatively well or it used to be able to before it got the health nerf um 200 dps on an anti-air cannon that has the large range out here i don't think uh yeah so it does not have a blue circle to let you know but i believe the anti-air range is at least close to this outer green range out here it's probably in between these two circles uh range on the anti-air is 65 yes yeah, so it will be the outer green circle here Alrighty, that wraps up those let's talk about strat subs these are the nukes for the other three factions that are not seraphim cybern is the oddball out once again on this one cybern is odd in a lot of situations uh these subs cost 9,000 mass and they actually have a pretty dang good torpedo weapon on them uh, it's 225 damage per second they're the only ones that actually have a defense mechanism built into the sub however you do not want to build these as attack units because 9,000 or 10,000 mass my bad I did not have my information pulled up 10,000 mass is way too much to pay for a unit that only has 3,500 health 
even if it does have 225 torpedo damage. What this is meant to do is to be able to defend itself from a Tech 2 sub or a couple of Tech 1 subs or maybe a destroyer to punch back for a short amount of time. And I do mean a short amount of time. Um, it's not totally helpless, but it can't really save itself either. It has a tack launcher. Actually, let me lump all these together and say this is one because they're all basically the same in this aspect. Um, 10,000 mass because you have the torpedo weapon. These two are 9,000 mass and they are essentially the same. The nuke warhead on all of these does 25,000 damage total. The only difference in the Siren one is that it's called the EMP Flux. I don't know that the EMP is actually that much different on this one than regular nukes. I'm not 100% sure on that. Enamel nuke is enamel nuke for the most part. 25,000 damage, which is not that much, but it is good for laying down a large chunk of damage on an opposing navy or even to hit a shore base with one of those. All three of these do have a long range cruise missile. The range on these is 256, which is the large yellow circle here. And that is a nice distance to reach to kill nuke defense. I don't know why more people don't use this strategy, but if you get two or three nuke subs up and you load them up with nukes, you can march right over to their shoreline and proceed to obliterate their nuke defense with this handy dandy launcher. Um, let me see if I can get it launching here. There we go. These do 200 DPS a piece and have relatively, actually exactly the same um, firing cycles. It's one projectile every 10 seconds and trying to see the health is not listed on those. They have three area of effect though, very large area of effect. And if your opponent is not prepared with TMD, these can very quickly knock out a nuke defense uh, two three missiles hitting it will kill it they do 2,000 damage a piece each one of these missiles and I believe a nuke defense is 4,800 health so that would be three missiles so just something to remember about these units so that pretty much wraps those up there is one unit that I did forget to put on the map and I just realized it because I was talking about tack missiles those of you who are wondering alt f2 does bring up the cheat menu and that lets you choose anything that you want to create and you just spawn it in. And this is what I was looking for. The missile ship. This is an Aeon toy that is unique to the faction. Um, it is a long range cruiser essentially. This thing reaches out to 200 range with its tack missiles, which is very, very handy. You can walk right up to the edge of the water and reach way across the map to kill stuff. It has dual launchers that fire five projectiles back to back, a second apart, and then it has a 16 second reload time for a total of 20 seconds. Each of the tack missiles takes two TMD to shoot down and so these are very effective at breaking tack defense barriers. Um, it's similar to the UEF cruiser in that respect. 200 DPS, normal amount of DPS. These actually have brutal anti-torpedo on them, which is kind of odd, but they do. They have four anti-torpedo projectiles, each one firing once every four seconds. So essentially once per second, similar to the Cooper's firing rate. And that does let them defend themselves a bit against torp bombers and also against anything intruding on your Navy. Let me show you the firing cycle on that just because it's cool and we will move on. Kaboom. Long string of tacks there. You can see the two guns bringing to bear firing in back to back to back tack missiles no hope of defending against those and then a long reload cycle there we go and let's talk about sonar and then we'll talk about t3 t4 and we're done and you say why do you want to talk about sonar well because the sonars are mobile and they each have different attributes and you should know what they are 
Seraphim got left out on this one. They do not have a Tech 3 Sonar. They only have Tech 2, but look at the range of their Tech 2. Look at the range of the other factions, Tech 3. You just need to build more Tech 2s of the Seraphim, and the super long range will let you get good intel. These guys each have one defining attribute. Cybran provides stealth inside this brown ring. Build some extra sonars when you're cyber and you can easily stealth your entire navy with far less units than you would need mermaids to cover every bit of your navy with stealth. UEF has torpedoes. Interestingly enough, if you spam UEF T3 sonar, you can actually beat any faction's Tech 1 subs mass for mass with the uh, sonar, which is kind of hilarious to think about. I just about died laughing the first time I saw this happen. Somebody did it just to spite me. The, the power consumption is much higher. These cost a lot of power to build for an equivalent amount of torpedo damage but the mass cost is less per torpedo damage than the T1 subs and they have way more health. I'm trying to find the actual statistics on it so I can tell you and not lead you astray. There it is right there. Um, 37.5 damage per second. It has the same gun on it, the same torpedo launcher as the Tech 1 subs, but it has 2,000 health as opposed to 600 and it only costs 40 more mass. So these will win in a fight with the Tech 1 sub, mass for mass. And then the Aeon sonar has torpedo defense. Not very good torpedo defense, not worth spamming these and sticking them in your navy, but they do have torpedo defense. Didn't know before, now you know. All right, the T4, the stage that we've been waiting for. Uh, let's talk about Cybern. Cybern is convoluted, and I'm going to touch on a couple of things with this that you need to know about. Um, the Brick and the Wagner, of course, are amphibious, so they go under the water. The Wagner's not a whole lot of use to us. We're going to get rid of it. The Brick, however, is. The Brick has a reasonably respectable anti-torpedo weapon, and it does spam a lot of torpedo fire. So pair it up with a megalith, if you have 10 or 15 bricks and a megalith underwater, you can actually confuse the hell out of enemy torpedo systems and have a pretty good chance of overwhelming the total torpedo defense of the enemy navy. These are nice supplements to cyber navy if you're kind of on your back foot off balance, um, or if you are in your final push, you're going to be putting units on land soon. These are awesome to have. Megalith moves faster underwater than it does on land, and it has high-mounted shoulder cannons, which allow it to stand in relatively deep water and still fire its main guns, which makes that awesome versus battleships. So I know I talked about specific unit statistics in the T4 video, but don't forget that the Cybern Megalith kind of dual roles as a naval unit as well as a land unit. That 110,000 health makes it a absolutely indestructible tank underwater. Torpedo units generally do not deal as much damage um, as direct fire units do, so it takes a lot of time to burn through that much health. And then there is a stationary defense that we actually need to talk about in conjunction with the Navy. Uh, the flood, or the harm, my bad. The harm is the Tech 3 torpedo defense system, which has a whopping 80, no, 70 range, my bad. 70, I did not have it pulled up. That is my fault, people. There it is right there. 80 range, I was right the first time. Um, so this matches range with the other faction's destroyers, and it has greater range than the T3 sub. So this makes a very nice tool for naval denial in an area for cyber. You can push these with cyber SACUs, and that brings a whole new level of torment to the, fa to the cyber faction that you can taunt the other factions with. Um, the one problem with the harm and its weakness, which it should have a weakness because it's actually a very strong unit, is that it's relatively close to the surface and it can be ground fired by enemy battleships or cruisers. That's how you get rid of the harms. 
All you gotta do is ground fire with a unit and then drag the reticule over top of that and this will fire and kill it. So that is all you gotta do. Um, cost wise, this costs 3000 mass, has 11,000 health and does 375 damage. Very, very nice statistics. And finally, to end this video, we've got the T4s. The Tempest and the Atlantis for Aeon and UEF. These guys serve relatively vital roles within the navies. They're kind of unique in that aspect. They're cheap T4 units. They're meant to be built several at a time. And I would honestly say the Aeon is a crucial part of the Navy because the Aeon Navy as a whole lacks range. Um, the battleship has the lowest range. They do not have a T2 bombardment weapon. Uh, they have the missile ship at T3, but it is kind of defenseless. Uh, no anti-air, no direct fire weapons. You're going to want a battleship to be your heavy hitter, and the Tempest is your only option. It loses mass for mass to any other faction's battleship, but throw some mobile shields out there, get it behind some other destroyers, and your rush and crush battleships, the Omen class, use those for your up-close and personal battles. Use the Tempest to stand back kind of in a similar role as what the Summit has. 150 range, same as the Summit, not, uh, 800 damage per second on the main weapon. Projectile does 8,000 damage per strike, fires once every 10 seconds, is kind of easy to dodge, but uh, when you have the late game huge globs of Navy, it does do well. It has a very powerful torpedo system, 420 damage per second on 80 range, and it has an amazing, amazing anti-torpedo system. Two projectiles per second knocks a whole lot of torpedoes out of the water. So the Tempest is a very good uh, sub-solution late game. Um, and again, not the best best t4s are never the the most efficient mass for mass the lower tiers are always more efficient but it is a good one nonetheless pair it with some shields and it does very well Sixty thousand health on this and it costs twenty four thousand mass so it costs the same as three battleships and basically any two battleships of the other factions can beat it granted that you can rush into range when you involve a bunch of other units in the mix, it becomes a lot more convoluted, and honestly, the Tempest does better in large groups, but that is just your mass for mass comparison because this is a comparison video. So let's get rid of this unit, and we will be done with it. The UEF Atlantis. This is an oddball. This is a carrier for the UEF. They do not have a T3 carrier. They have a T4 submersible carrier. Interesting little piece of trivia. The... UEF gunship, you'll remember we talked about, has the docking clamp. It can pick up and carry a unit. So you can load tanks and flak into broadswords, load the broadswords into the Atlantis, drive the Atlantis across the ocean, and then bam, you have a dropship group. You can emerge from the Atlantis, drop the tanks on the shore, and then just run over everything. Kind of a funny tactic, not the most efficient one, but it is pretty fun to implement. It has awesome anti-air, 4 times 80 DPS, has a 1.5 damage radius, not as big as Flak, bigger than Sam's, and does very well for itself anti-air wise. 40,000 health, costs 12,000 mass, dirt cheap T4, meant for spamming, and it has an 80 range torpedo weapon worth 400 damage per second very nice and this one you pair with bulwarks and coopers bulwarks for extra health coopers for anti-torpedo and then you use the atlantis to reach out with its superior range and kill stuff now one thing about the atlantis that some people don't fully realize but is incredibly handy especially versus siren this thing has a water vision radius of 100 and a built-in sonar worth 252. 
end radar and a total vision radius of 100. This thing can see everything from a mile away. And when you're dealing with cyber and stealth, this is a lifesaver. The vision radius on the Atlantis is actually longer by 20 than the attack range of the destroyers. So stealth or no, the opposing uh, forces cannot get in range to attack without coming within vision radius. So this is a lifesaver. If you can get one of these out in the early late game um, versus a cyber and opponent, you'll basically see everything that they're doing near your navy and it helps you deal a lot of damage. So do not underestimate the intel potential of this unit. That is one of its big uses. Then of course, you can submerge, you can emerge, and you can build units in this. You can sit under the water, build strap bombers for 10 minutes, and then emerge and spit them all out and just wreck whatever you want on the shore. So that is that. That is all of the Navy. That was a very long video, longer than I wanted it to be, but we had to get through everything. I thank you very much for sticking with me through this. Uh, we have probably one more unit tutorial to go through, and that would be stationary defenses. And then I'll probably start putting out every once in a while a strategy guide. We already did initial base building. The next one, of course, is going to be early game land spam phase. And then we'll go to T2 shift and talk about a bunch of other things. But that is for another day. For now, you can bask in the luxurious knowledge of everything Navy. And go ahead and double check the comments section because I'm sure all the pro players are going to be correcting me on everything that I said wrong. And I'm terribly sorry about confusing the battleship damage earlier. My brain did not get the math right on that. 450, not 550 for all the factions. And then about 510 for the Aeon battleship. Alrighty, guys, that is going to wrap it up for me. I will see you in the next cast. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for support. Good luck on your next naval battle and I will see you guys later.